So welcome back everyone. This is Akshay here and welcome back to the another great day of the GFG beauty district of day 167. And if you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe so that you can learn, maintain and grow a streak together. And if you have read the today's question, able to solve it well and good because that's a very standard question to finding an equilibrium point in an array. Asked in Amazon and Adobe. So the question, so without wasting any further time, so let us start with the question. The question name is equal left and right sub array sum and the tags given here as prefix sum array and grid structures and algorithms. So let us read the question. So uh, we have given an array of n positive integers. The task is to find the first index uh, in array such that the sum of elements before it and equal the sum elements after it are equal, right? So you can see for the first test case 1, 3, 5, 2 and 2. So basically we just have to find in the pool of elements we have to find the equilibrium point where the left sum is equal to the right sum. So for our current test case 1, 3, 5, 2 and 2, you can clearly see that this is the that's the first point of equilibrium, right? That where the left sum which is equal to 4 and the right sum equals to 4 are equal, right? So subset pehla method, the brute force method it's coming to my mind is that iterate for each and every iterate for each every, each and every element or uh, I can say for every element right and for every element calculate calculate left sum and r sum and keep checking that if if both are equal then you have to just return that index right so take care this will be a brute force approach and you uh, easy question right if you are just considering the brute force thing but then again what would be the pseudocode of this that we will having a for loop will start from i equals to 0 to i less than n i plus plus right we will be having some variables l sum equals to 0 and then r sum is equals to 0 and then we will have two more for loop running in the parallel that is let's say for j equals to i to j less than i and j plus plus right okay, suppose this is my ith pointer i need the sum from 0th index to just behind the ith index right so that is why i'm running from j equals to 0 to j less than i and I need the sum for the right hand side from i plus 1 to the end. So I will run another for loop and I will say that for k is equals to i plus 1 to k less than n and k plus plus. Right? That would be my first approach. And here I will just say that my l sum is nothing but plus equals to array of j. And here my r sum is nothing but plus equals to array of k. And at last here, I will just compare before ending this for loop, I will check that if my r sum, I am writing rs, if equals to ls, then I have to return the index. And in the question, it is said that uh, it's one base indexing, right? So that means I have to return not just i, but i plus 1, right? So that would be the pseudo code for our first approach. Now, please pause this video and try to code this approach in your editor and then we will continue ahead. So you can see that's the first approach. Uh, just for loop and then you have two parallel for loops running calculating the l sum and r sum for each and every particular element and the expected output and output matches matches but uh, what is the uh, time complexity of this approach is that n square right we are using one for loop and there are two for loop running in parallel so it will be n into n right this for loop will be taking n and this will be the worst will be taking for the last element it would take n so it is n square and the constraint is given is 10 per 6 if you do 10 per 6 per square it will be 10 per 12 which is definitely less greater than 10 power 8 and although our code and approach is right but it will give you the TLE so let us verify that as well let us hit the submit button and we will verify it then we'll proceed on with the optimization whatsoever we had for this question 110 cases pass and rest all the all of them are giving TLE because it is going out of bound of 10 power 8 so what can we do is so what is the repeating steps that we are doing repeating steps that we are always collecting calculating l sum and r sum right for each and every index that is we have a particular bunch of elements and then i am first calculating this and then first calculating this for each and every element instead what can, what i can do is that i will maintain a for loop to calculate the total sum right and for that i am showing the pseudo code as well so i will just say that sum plus equals to array of i right and the elements you you were having was uh, 1 3 5 2 and 2 so let me write down as well so 1 3 5 2 and 2 and if you calculate the sum, then sum will be 5 plus 3, 8, 9 plus 4, 13, right? And when I'm at this index, let's say when I'm at this index, let me use a different color now. So when I'm at this index, if I do sum minus this particular element, then I will getting the right sum, right or not? So let's say for i equals to 0, what I will do is that I will update my sum is nothing but minus, minus equals to array of i, 
and it will give me as 13 minus 1 12 so i already have the right sum using this one uh, loop that is running for to keep the track of the sum i just need the else sum variable right so i'll be running a one more for loop for i equals to 0 to i less than an i plus plus and i will maintain one variable else sum equals to 0 right right and else sum will give me the track of my left sum that is nothing but else sum plus array of i correct but let's say I'm, when i'm the starting position the else sum is nothing else sum is 0 right so I need to compare then and there, right? So first what I will be need to doing is that sum minus equals to array of i, this will be my first step. And I have to compare that if sum, if my right sum, which is stored in this sum variable, if it is equals to else sum, right? Then what you have to do, you have to return minus one, right? And if, uh, and if that's not the case, then you go for this thing, increment your left sum as well, right? This will be your second parallel for loop. Right, and if nothing is possible, then you need to you need to return minus one. Right, so let us dry run this code here. So for i equals to zero, sum will be equals to twelve, and else sum will be equals to zero. So it is it is not uh, equal. So we will update the else sum plus equals to first element, so it will be updated as one. Now for i equals to one, what will happen? That the sum is nothing but twelve minus my current element. So that is nothing but twelve minus three. That is nine, and my else sum is pointing to one. And and 9 and 1 is still not equal so we'll update it to 1 plus the current element that is 3 so if we 1 plus 3 will give you 4 let's solve it for the uh, i equals to 2 and then sum will be pointing to what 9 minus 5 that is 4 correct and uh, your else sum is pointing to 4 and now you can see we have a comparison here that if both the sum are equal we just have to return the index plus 1 so for i equals to 2 i plus 1 that is 3 will be returned uh one sec yes three will be returned correct and here we just have to break the loop because it is not asking to calculate all the equilibrium points just the first equilibrium points right so here we will stop here we will stop and that is what this return is doing return uh not minus one but i plus one right and if none of the in none of the uh, points is possible where the r sum is not equal to l sum then it will return this minus one so I highly recommend you now to please pause the video and try to code this yourself. And before that, let us discuss the time complexity as well. So time complexity will be nothing but O of n and space complexity will be nothing but O of 1. Because you have not used any such uh, space, just instead of some variables, right? So that will be your entire pseudo code. Now please pause this video for maybe 2 to 3 minutes and try to code this approach. And also this, uh, uh, okay, yeah, please try to code this approach. Okay, so in the meanwhile, I've coded the exact step which I showed you in the dry run as well, as well as in the pseudo code. So clearly, this uh, uh, code is taking O of n, which is nothing but 10 power 6, and it is definitely less than 10 power 8. So our code, our approach and logic is right, so it should definitely get submitted. Let us verify that as well, and then we will end this video. So great, all the test cases have been passed successfully, and regarding the last thing that we have to are doing C++ code as well. So I think uh, we do not need to do any changes in this particular code, right? We're just running a for loop and accessing the array index, which is done exactly the same in the C++. So you can run the same code in C++ to get the output reflected, right? And also this is a very standard question of array. Whenever you will learn array in data structures and algorithm, you will surely come to this, uh, what to say, problem. So that is for today. That's it for today's video. And uh, from now on, now on onwards, I'll be using this open board because uh, all the online editors and software were giving me a very, what to say, a lag while learning the OBS and editor as well. So, but this open board is like very light software, I guess. So thank you for, to you guys mentioning this software in the comment and let us meet in the tomorrow's video of day 168. Till then, bye-bye, take care, keep growing and take care.